Looks like we have a, a visitor from the Conservation uh, uh, Commission here, Eugenia. Oh. Yes, that's correct. From Groton Conservation Advocates, not the Conservation Commission. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I guess I guess. That's pretty correct. close. So as we get ready to start here, I'll just remind everybody to please uh, mute and, and unmute yourself when you want to speak. All righty, uh, 501, I um, guess we'll start the meeting tonight. We have a roll call, we have uh, those that we see, Jerry, you got everybody uh, on Zoom. Anybody on the phone? We have that, uh, and we uh, and we have a visitor that we've already acknowledged, so that's good. Uh, we have our approval of our minutes from our last uh, from our last meeting. Anybody have a chance to look at those? Yeah. Okay. I guess we need a, a motion to accept the minutes of last the last meeting. Looks, looks like Larry made looks, a motion. Larry, okay. Make a motion. Second. All, All second. second. Chad. Chad. Any discussion? Abstention? Okay. All opposed? Okay, we're good then. All right. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to uh, get back to my. Okay, so tonight we we're discussing, uh, I guess, a follow on from uh, last week's discussion of the possibility of fields, uh, where we could put them now. We're to that uh, point of the process. And I believe uh, Chad had gone out, um, was going to provided some more information. Um, they were talking about the high school pretty much last week. Um, some more information about the high school. So Chad, if you would like to. Frank, before, thing. You, before you go there. Chad, Chad, you would, I'm sorry. Skip the um, public comment part of the agenda there. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. I apologize. Do we have any public comment? I'm sorry about that. Since we have a member of the public here. Yep. And that would be you, Eugenia. <laughs> if you have none, then we'll, we'll just move on. I, I, I am just here to listen. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry, okay, Chad, you could uh, see what you've uh, learned. All right, um, we've learned a tiny bit, not a ton. Um, so we, we, Jerry did a good job of, you know, hounding everybody for information. Um, and I think it was about late last week that we got, uh, through the town surveyor, we got a bunch of information and through some of our other engineering contacts, we got it. So beginning of this week, we started assembling stuff. So I don't have, we, we just got the base map kind of assembled of, of existing conditions, uh, and it compiles everything from the high school to Claude Chester. Um, since we were talking about the high school, how we could fit fields up there, we've talked about Sutton Park, which is at the bottom of the field or bottom of the hill. And we've talked about, you know, Pequannock Plains and, and Claude Chester. We just put it all into one map. So we can obviously zoom in and, and look at different areas or we can, uh, you know, focus in on one area or look at the whole picture. Um, but other than that, literally it just got printed this afternoon was the first time I saw it come off the printer. Um, so I don't have any, you know, specific information on to how many fields do I think we can fit yet. Um, 
and, and things like that. So we're, we're just starting, but definitely, you know, in the next two weeks, we can have some, some better information for you. So um, Frank, I guess I can just jump in there and just to, just to kind of bring everybody up to speed, you know, we've had um, some people, um, you know, are missing today, but we've also had some people that missed the, the last meeting or so, but just to wrap up where we were at, um, we did um, determine that the town needs two full-size synthetic rectangles, two full-size natural surface rectangles, three large ball fields and one intermediate size ball field. Then we went back and we looked at the, just the Fitch High School needs and the Fitch High School needs were one full size rectangle, two natural surface rectangles, a softball field and two tennis courts. So if we kind of look at, um, you know, there was a lot of discussion about, you know, if we meet the high school's needs, we can, you know, decrease the, uh, the town needs uh, accordingly. So, you know, that the, the, if the high school gets a full size synthetic rectangle, then the town would only need a um, one synthetic rectangle. If uh, Fitch High School gets two natural surface rectangles, the town probably doesn't need any natural surface rectangles. Conversely, if, you know, the, the property up at Fitch doesn't um, accommodate two full-size natural surface rectangles and we put those in a park property, you know, I think, you, you know, obviously the high school would, would get used for that. Um, so, you know, just kind of looking at how those two things kind of overlap, you know, the, the two different needs is, is, is a part of, of, you know, part of our calculus, I guess, when we get down to it. Um, I did also want to bring up a couple of other um, things since, you know, since Chad isn't quite ready to uh, present his information yet, but I just wanted to share out there that Grasso Tech um, informed me that they do see their fields coming online in 2022. So a couple years, um, they do anticipate having a full size synthetic rectangle um, with stadium seating and that type of thing up on top and then down below, they do intend to build um, the full-size ball field and a full-size softball field uh, natural surface for their, their teams. Um, and there was, you know, they have some interest in having some kind of arrangement with the town to um, maintain those fields. And in return, the town, you know, could potentially get access to um, Grasso Tech Fields, kind of as the, um, you know, the the, uh, the MOU or the arrangement. Um, that that is a long way off. Um, the um, the athletic director at Grasso Tech, uh, you know, mentioned that you know the the superintendent or not the superintendent, the principal at the school doesn't have ultimate authority at the school, and sometimes, um, you know. Um, fee waivers and stuff like that. If the town were to use their fields, the fee waiver would have to go to the superintendent rather than the principal. So, you know, asking somebody in Hartford if they're willing to waive the fees for, you know, some town use of Grasso Tech fields, I, I kind of told the, uh, the principal and the athletic director at Grasso that that's probably not good enough. You know, we'd want to have, you know, some assurance that the superintendent up in Hartford is going to you know, uh, agree to that right off the right from the get go that, you know, when we ask um, if we're maintaining those fields, that's that's kind of the deal. We don't want to have to go through a, a process where somebody could decide later on that, um, no, we don't get access after we've already done work maintaining the fields. That was not a, you know, something that I think we could say yes to. Um, I also wanted to point out that uh, there was some discussion at the council. Um, about, um, you know, the future of the Noank School Park property up, up here on the top of the hill, uh, just down the street from me. Um, the, the council has decided not to sell the property. And so there's kind of three alternatives that, that they see there. One is kind of, uh, you know, having a um, kind of an arboretum place where they plant some trees and, you know, just make it a nice, just real uh, wooded park. 
another one was to uh, leave, I think, the, the, the garden that's up there and kind of create just a, a, um, a small field there that really wasn't, um, I guess, highly developed. And then the third option was to develop a field up there, you know, whatever kind of a field that we might put on the, that property. Um, and I know uh, Councillor um, Franco, I think she was the one who, you know, was, she emailed me before this meeting and, and kind of presented that and just to, to throw that out there as, um, you know, stuff for this, this body to kind of reflect as we're trying to, trying to find places for these fields to, you know, take that into account. So I, I guess I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions or if anybody else has any comments on, on stuff. Jerry, this is Chad. I'll, I'll jump in a little bit on that also, um, just because our office, I wasn't involved in it, but my partner was involved with some of the stuff at the Noank School. Um, and, uh, you know, what we looked at was, was obviously, I'll say a little bit outdated um, because it was through that committee that was looking for things. Um, we did look at what type of a field would fit. At the time, we were showing a small rectangle, so not a full-size multi-use rectangle, but a youth-size field. Um, you know, whether or not that's the, the right choice or not, I mean, right now, based on everything we've done, the data looks like we probably don't need more of the small fields. Um, you know, it's probably the, a good choice to have for the neighborhood to just have a large open grass area. Uh, whether we want to build it as an actual field is probably up for a little bit of debate. Uh, we did just kind of quickly try to look at it um, as far as a full-size field would go. And, you know, to, to get a full-size rectangle in there, it would be really tight and it would overpower quite a bit of the other stuff. So my personal take is that that's probably not the best place to put a full-size rectangle. Um, if the small size one, you know, if that's desired or the, just the neighborhood wants it as, you know, open space along with the rest of it, that works great. Um, you know, and then we have not looked at it as far as a ball field goes. Um, and the only other thing I'd add to all of that as far as either rectangles or ball fields, um, one of the things we as a committee had been talking about was that we should, if we were to build some, you know, do we build them in an area where we can put multiples together and be able to to have a tournament play. Um, and the only thing, you know, with that property is that one field is, is max all you're gonna get. So that might not go along with the, the hope and dreams there from the committee perspective, as far as I see it at least, um, for being able to do tournament play. Frank, can you see the hands uh, raised there? We've got Councillor Zapiri. Who's first there? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, I think the first thing we should be considering, uh, we've gotten some emails from parents, is a uh, field hockey field uh, for uh, the girls. Right now they're playing on the outfield of the baseball diamond at Fitch. Uh, Title IX requires that we do provide for girls equally as we provide for the males in schools and sports. Um, and I think that's something that should take a priority. As far as the Noank School is concerned, we've had a lot of mail on the council from people who live in the area and they don't want a regulation size ball field there and they don't want league play there only because it increases the traffic in the area we would require a, uh, a, a parking lot uh, and would take away from the open space that they're hoping to have. The overwhelming majority of people who have written to the council have indicated that they want to preserve that as open space, uh, either the, the Frost, uh, uh, Chad Frost firm had uh, drawn up a proposal for it, uh, and there have been proposals for, for creating an arboretum, uh, but they definitely do not want to have uh, baseball fields with a lot of traffic coming into Little Knowing. The streets there are pretty small. The park is very close to the housing that lines the streets. Uh, and they all feel that that would be uh, uh, a bad thing for the neighborhood. So I, I think we should look at that, respect those wishes, and look at other areas that we have. 
uh, to develop fields on. Uh, but my prime, one of my prime concerns is that we get the girls set up with a place where they can call home their own, a uh, place for field hockey at, at the high school. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I had this thought myself, um, and I had talked to Jerry just quickly before anyone joined. Do we have a um, uh, an idea of these, what's, what's available? For instance, I was telling Jerry, I live on, uh, on the uh, sub, sub base end of town and I go by Pleasant, on Pleasant Valley Road all the time. And I see that big old school and all that property there, you know, just for argument's sake, what if I drop two lacrosse fields there? or two, two squares that could be used by lacrosse, for instance. And that could be the home of Groton lacrosse or something like that. I, I don't know, I, I just don't, I don't know what is, uh, what is being thought of for, for I, I'm just trying to picture, I don't know what you would do there, but it just seems like a big old spot and there's just nothing going on. And I don't know what the town's indications are of that property. And I, I'm sure there's more than that rolling around that I, I just happen to see that one all the time. It was almost like you could take it, put a couple fields there and turn it into the Groton lacrosse, whether it's high school, uh, you know, Groton something, field hockey could go there, anything could go there. But just areas like that, that were, there are obviously not being utilized as we speak. So I don't know who who we go to. Um, it's probably out there somewhere. I'm just not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, not smart enough to know what, what it is at this point in time. Just so one of the like things that, that we um, look at it in there, and I, I guess I didn't mention it to you earlier, you know, the, the Pleasant Valley School property in particular is a, you know, it's a school. So the Board of Ed controls that property and, and you know, could you develop that? I think probably you could potentially develop that. Um, but, you know, I guess in terms of, uh, you know who who the primary users are. It would make a lot of sense if the primary users were the people in the elementary school, but I don't think that would kind of be the case. You know, putting you know it makes a lot of sense to put fields at the high school because the high school is using them, for example. But putting those fields at a at an elementary school on one particular side of town would, I think that you know, while possible, the land is there potentially could be used for that. Um, you know, in terms of maintenance you know i could see our parks guys taking all day going over back and forth across town from one place to the other and you know and just having it be accessible like if it's a lacrosse how are that you know it's a high school going to bust their kids all the way across town to go to you know practice or whatever i could see that you know uh just operationally being have have some challenges so you know and if we're looking at chad's field score you know i think that could potentially decrease uh whatever bang we would get out of the uh the thing. And I guess I see another hand up there. So who's, oh. Uh, there's a Larry, couple of people Rachel. messaging you. Yeah, Rachel, Rachel uh, is just joined us. So sorry, Rachel, that I made you wait there. I didn't, didn't see you enter earlier. That's okay, thank you. No, I just got noticed um, from somebody that we were discussing knowing gardens here. So I thought I would jump on. Um, I don't know what the conversation has been, and I um, I see somebody from Ground Conservation Advocates is here, and I sent a message off today to tell you that I am advocating for a sports field up at Knowing Gardens, and that I would like the task force to decide which um, type of field that would go there if the council decides it. So this is not an issue that I think it would be premature to debate whether or not a, a field should go up there or not at this time um, through the task force, because that's actually the council can make that decision. And um, because if it's town property, it's something that the town council should decide what to do with it and then come to you knowing what you know about task force, I mean, uh, sports fields, and then decide what would be the best fit for up there. And as I um, mentioned in the letter to you, um, council members that are in favor of this at the moment are looking, would, lo would like youth fields, not high school fields up there. Um, 
And what struck my mind is a rectangle field or a 5070 field may be something that would fit up there, but this is all premature because the council has not decided on this. So I wanted to just share that with you because I was notified that knowing gardens is coming up in the task force and I should get on. Yep. So if somebody wants to catch me up to date on exactly what's been discussed, I'd appreciate that in a very quick synopsis. Yeah, um, I think the, the, the most that I, I started that discussion off by mentioning that you did send that um, an email out about that, um, the property and then Chad shared some information about uh, some uh, work that Kenton Frost did to determine what might go there. And I think if I can summarize what he said was that it may be physically possible to put a uh, full size rectangle up there, but um, that would be very, very tight fit and it might be more appropriate for a smaller field or um, if it was just kind of a, an open area that could be used as a field that wasn't necessarily maintained as an athletic field. Um, is that is that kind of is that accurate, Chad? Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, I think uh, Rachel, you've probably seen the plan that we had done. Um, it's you know a full size field, and I didn't know what what type of field you were hoping to get up there or thought might be appropriate up there. So we just looked quickly. A full size one um, would be very difficult. Uh, a youth size field is what we had on the plans that does fit. Um, it depends on how much use you want to put in there and parking and things like that. Um, and then from a ball field, ball field perspective, we might be able to, you know, definitely couldn't get a high school size field up there, but a little league field, probably we wouldn't be able to get both a little league field and a, a rectangle. I don't think together, but, um, you know, I, I guess we'd be open to looking at what it is the council wants to see up there and then see how we get it to fit. Okay, thank you, because um, uh, council hasn't made any decision at all right now. I mean, it's just something that um, there's a motion and sports fields at knowing, a, a regulation fields, um, sports field, as well as a general field are my, my motion and with whatever is the surrounding, could be surrounded with park-like setting. Um, with that, this hasn't been voted on. So um, that's why I'm concerned that we're talking about this and debating maybe what could or couldn't go there prior to the council vote. Sure, the and only thing I- And the, trying to maybe um, with the debate going on here, this will be brought back to the council prior to the vote of a council. That's why I, I have been alerted to this and came on here. So things that you're saying here will probably be brought back to the council and be used in debate. Okay, I was I was not aware it was even in a debate form like that. I was just trying to give my two cents as to what we've seen up there from the little, and again, we were limited into what we really looked at up there from a what fits perspective. Um, you know, and the only right. point I made as well was, you know, that from on some level, if we're looking to try to do some tournament level play and things like that, the more we can group fields, the better, um, you know, right. but again, I would say whatever, whatever the council decides, then obviously we can look at that as well. Right. Cause I mean, I, I actually sent a letter to, um, I believe it was Jerry and said, I wasn't going to be in these meetings because I'm actually down in Florida helping to take care of my, my father has stage four cancer right now, but I get this call that there's basically discussion on knowing gardens on here. So I had to jump on because whatever is being said here will probably go back to the council and be used in debate. So it shouldn't be debated right now, I don't think, in advance of the council making a decision. So oh, just to, I'm just putting it out there that what you're saying is probably going to be used and it probably isn't appropriate at this time. So um, in terms of the um, task force, the charge for the task force was, you know, we've, we've kind of, determined a work progress that we were going to determine the need we were going to determine potential locations and then we're going to do you know do develop potential costs we don't have permission from the council to put fields at claude chester we don't have permission from the council to put any fields at the high school we don't have field or permission to put fields anywhere in town what we're doing is evaluating any potential uh, properties so that we can make a recommendation to the council the council can act as they want on any on any of those properties without you know this this 
this, you know, regardless of what this task force says. So, it, you know, I, I don't, I don't particularly see the knowing school property as any different than, say, Claude Chester or Sutton Park or, you know, any other pro potential property. We're just looking at where we would theoretically see the best location for any fields in town to, to meet the needs that we've identified and present that in a package to the council and the council gets to say yes or no. Um, so, you know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think there was an intention here to kind of, you know, um, beat the council to the, to the punch on debating knowing school. It's, it's just one of many different possibilities, including, you know, we, we talked earlier about Grasso Tech potential fields too. Mm -hmm. So there's, that's just where it's coming from. It's not coming from any, any kind of a, you know, we've made a decision or think knowing school, any, anything more or less than any other thing at this point. Understood. I just don't want it to be brought back to the council and say, well, at, I was at the task force meeting and this is what they said. And it might have been a discussion and they're going to take a part of it and say what was said. So if the council sees fit and passes a motion to say, let's put a sports field up there, my motion says allow the task force to choose which field goes there. That's what the motion says. If so I then may, you would be tasked to say, this is what we think would fit there, or this would be the best fit for that location. If I may, I don't think we should bring anything back to the council from this uh, task force until the task force has made its decision as to what it wants to do. Exactly. And then, the then the council can discuss it and debate it in terms of what the communities want and what the town can afford. So those are things that will have will come into the, the, the thing before the council. But right now, the task force job, as, uh, as you've said, is to look at different sites, determine what our needs are, and then uh, present that to the council with a request for action. Um, so I, right now, I agree with uh, Rachel. I don't think anything should go back to the council from here until we're ready to make a presentation, until we're ready to make a presentation from the whole group. Now, I'm the one that raised the issue on when, when Knowing Gardens was raised. I'm the one who said, we've had a lot of emails and it's overwhelmingly in support of preserving open space according to the plan that Chad Frost had presented or to simply create an arboretum. And it's overwhelmingly opposed to putting a regulation ball field in there of any kind because they just don't want that kind of traffic. It would also, pre that sort of thing, I think this group should look at would preclude the use of the property for a lot of the individual things. Uh, no one goes out and spreads a blanket on the middle of the outfield of a baseball field to have a picnic. Uh, and that's, I think, the well, people who are saying, interested in hanging on Rachel. I listen no, to it's inappropriate to even be talking about uh, knowing gardens tonight. Well, no, I'm just saying that this is where we up. are with that. And I'm not going to take anything from this committee back to the council uh, until we're ready as a committee or as a task force to make a recommendation to the council. And I think that's where it should be. Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Rich. I came a little bit late into the meeting. Um, had So when we last spoke at the last meeting, um, we were talking about Chad was going to see if they could look at the high school property and, and get some drawings. Or how, did, has that been discussed yet at this meeting? This is Chad. I'll jump in real quick, Rich. Um, we, we just got the plans. Uh, late last week we we took the beginning of this week to get all of the different data kind of compiled together and into a base map and the base map i just saw for the first time this afternoon so um i don't have any kind of answers we all i can report is we've got the beginnings of the existing conditions and uh, over the next week we'll we'll start putting fields on it and see what the real you know possibilities look like and then i'll report back Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Rich. So next step. So I was, I had been um, just asking about other properties 
that were out there. Um, is is there a is there a way to find that out out there? I mean, without driving around, I, I'm just asking. Um, because it, it's like you said, at some point in time, we have to, you know, we, we, we've, we've kind of determined, I think, our needs. Our next step is to try to, to, to come up with, you know, center the hub. But, you know, we, we had the note from um, the mayor about, you know, making the hub in the center of town, you know, in the Clodchester area with the Grosso Tech right there, the high school right there. And it's wonderful but I don't know if that all fits all the needs of everything that we're going to need. So um, knowing what else is out there is kind of our next step and what we can, what's out there. You know, we can, sure, we can put a presentation together and say, we need these five things. Thank you. Have a nice day. But I don't really think that's going to fulfill what we've been asked to do. So Frank, I, I just at the, the last meeting that we were at, you know, the, I presented a, a several maps of, of the properties that were kind of identified as the as the most likely properties. So I, I don't think it was a, a, a comprehensive map of every potential property, but I think it was, it, you know, there were maps of, of the ones that were, you know, I guess just from a, um, you know, a first blush kind of thing from the staff here that those are the properties that make the most sense. So, you know, with that, I, you know, I, you know, we, we haven't looked at Pleasant Valley, to be honest with you. I haven't looked at that myself and, and determined that one in particular. Um, I do note that you've got a hand up there as well. I can't hear you, but I think he was calling on you, Bruce. Oh, thanks. Um, Thanks, thanks, Frank. Um, so I think that, um, you know, what everyone's been talking about with regards to open fields, I think that Frank, like your idea when you went by Pleasant Valley, that the one of the functions of the task force should be to throw all those properties up and, um, and be able to have a discussion about them um, and, and the viability of them holding a field um, and what, you know, the town plans to do with them. So um, I think that like uh, what uh, Jerry had said, um, about the ones that we've seen, like Grasso Tech and uh, the different ones that I think for the next meeting, if there's, if anybody has any other locations they feel might be viable for fields, we should get them up onto the table so that we can assess the situation and, um, and you know, make sure we, 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 we cover every potential um, that's, that's, that's available to us. I think that would be part of our, our purview would be to um, identify potential locations and um, and I would imagine we would find out, you know, what would fit there, what wouldn't, and let the council decide what they wanted to develop or not develop. Right. Larry, you had your hand. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Um, but again, we, we need to wait for what Chad comes up with at the high school to see what can actually be put up there first. And then once we know that, then we can decide what might need to be put other places and where. Yeah. Well, this is Chad again, maybe if I could, um, over the course of the next two weeks, you know, we'll work on that. And then maybe Jerry and I can also have a discussion because Jerry's very familiar with, I'll say most, if not all of the open space in town. Um, and maybe between the two of us, we can kind of come up with the, the list and then also maybe quickly go through it and identify the ones that we think have potential to hold a field or, or more um, and then be able to present that to the committee at the same time. And I guess I would, I would have everybody take Frank's advice there too. If you have a particular property in mind, like Frank mentioned Pleasant Valley, you know, I can put that on the list, but it, it, the more you tell me, the more, you know, the, the better our answer will be when we, when we do get back together. Is there anyone that I missed? I don't, I don't, I can't see hands for some reason on my screen. Okay. So you've got, um, I think, uh, Councilor Bordelon and Mayor Granitowski both have their hands up. Uh, okay, Mayor, if you'd like to speak. Hi, thank you. I'm sorry I'm late, late to the meeting here this evening. I apologize for that. Um, I just, and perhaps you've discussed this already, but um, in addition to considering 
placing fields on um, land, have you considered installation of lights on the new turf field at the middle school? And my question that goes along with that is the cost benefit. So the cost of installing the lights there, how much more use could you get out of that field? And would that be enough to offset taking land to make more sports fields? That's the first thing. Second thing is taking um, and building fields at this point or installing light, lights at this point um, has to be taken in consideration with the infrastructure needs we have in the town. We have multiple bridges that need to be repaired. So while I value very much recreation, we also have other needs that will need to be weighed in conjunction with that. So, um, you know, in, in good times, um, this might be top of the list, but we have to be realistic about where things will fit in um, in the overall scheme of things. So please look at, look at all options. You know, if lights would be cheaper, maybe that should be considered rather than a whole new field. Thanks for letting me speak, appreciate it. Um, I guess maybe just to respond just uh, shortly to that. Um, uh, yes, Mayor, we have um, analyzed uh, what the potential for lights at, uh, at the fields are and, and how that increases usability. So as we are um, determining the fields that suit the need, absolutely, uh, that is a low hanging fruit that we would, you know, putting lights on the middle school field, for example, would be um, um, a, a great advantage and, and, and help meet a lot of the need in that way. Um, I, and I guess in terms of the, um, well, the question of resources, that's something that, um, as we've talked about here, that we're, our intention is to come up with a plan that meets the needs for the town and present that to the council. At that point, it's, you know, it's up to the council to either, uh, you know, uh, vote to put it into a capital improvement plan or or to send it to the voters in referendum and the, you know, the people to speak. So, you know, I, I, I don't think we, we are, you know, we're not the financial decision makers here for, for the town of Broughton. So we're just going to come up with the best plan we can and present that and, um, you know, and then let the, uh, the appropriate authorities, whether it's the council, the RTM citizens or whoever decide whether or not we, we pay for it or not or postpone it. Portia. Awesome. Councilor Portland. Yep, thank you. Um, I was going to say that um, what Bruce Flax, uh, Representative Flax spoke about, you know, looking at having all, all the different areas of possibilities on the table, I think is a great, doesn't mean that's going to be used necessarily, but it's great to, as we start to process and get that report from the high school to kind of see, you know, and pinpoint what's around. As far as the cost of what anything is, my understanding of the task force is to put all options on the table and the numbers right now shouldn't matter to an extent. And I can respectfully respect uh, Mayor Gronatowski's opinion about what the needs of the bridges are, but the needs of our fields are, is the reason why this task force was developed. And this is why we are here. I understand our bridges are being overlooked, but I feel our high school fields have been mismanaged. And I will say that frankly, as a graduate of that high school since 98, I have not seen many improvements to the fields out there. It's the same old everything. Um, the, I think even some of those are the original hurdles possibly down there. I don't even know. Um, I got Coach Costa to laugh. Uh, our equipment, and so this is not just a town aspect, this is also a board of ed problem. And so I guess for the record, what I'm trying to say is I joined this group to prevent a, a concrete dissection of all the needs of the town for our fields, eliminating the cost, taking that bias out and looking at what we need to run our town and keep people in our town and keep our high school competitive and then break it down based on the money. As far as the lights, we did already look at that as one avenue at one of our many other meetings. And, um, but that's only gonna give us a small snapshot of that field. There's other needs greater than that turf field that it can hold in the town. For example, we're behind the curve in supporting our high school, um, having a field hockey team. We have no feeder program on the rec department nor a field for our girls to play on. 
our girls, I feel, are underserved in this town. So I can't put a dollar amount on that right now. I'm just joining as a part as the, the, the tool to investigate. And I think that's what the report I want to present. I want to take the money out of it. And I want the report to, re, you know, summarize the need. And then we can break down the money after. And we can talk about bridges on another day. Thank you. Thank you, Cosman. Any other hands? Because again, I, I'm having issues trying to see them. So please let me know. Nobody else has a hand up right now. No one else right now? Okay. So where would you like to go forward from here? Um, I, I think we need some information that Chad's putting together. Um, because I think we've all felt that knowing what we can do at the high school will help flow down to our needs down downstream from that. It seems to be a big player. I think everyone recognizes the fact that we have field issues up there. And the, the, the question is how much can we help ourselves at the, uh, at the high school level or at the high school itself? Um, and then go down from there. So we need Chad's information. Um, also, I think I totally agree with, with what Bruce was talking about, about other areas out there that we can throw on the table, figure out what's out there. We kind of know what our need is um, and what, what's the best fit um, using kind of the parameters that we've used. You know, we want to try to centralize things. We want to, the things we're trying to do, but um, we can't do everything. It, it all doesn't fit in a nice little box as we all know. Um, so our homework assignment can be to see what else is out there for everybody. Um, and we can discuss that at our, at our next meeting. So, Jerry, do you yeah, I, think, I think that's a good idea, Frank. Again, if anybody has an idea, uh, go ahead and send it to me. Um, in the meantime, between now and our next meeting that we need to be, set a date for, but Chad and I can work together to, um, you know, come up with, um, you know, details about the property as much as we can so that, you know, when it comes down, maybe maybe our next meeting, if we have all the information, we can just go property by property and say what could potentially fit there and what what are the pros and cons of each one, and and maybe you know you know focus in on which ones we think are are going to be the most uh, you know uh, beneficial. And I do see a, a hand just went up there for Mayor Granatowski. Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to add in that um, perhaps contact should be made with the Economic Development Office because we have RFPs that will be going out on some of the school properties. And um, I, I would hate for people to get their hopes up um, when there will be bidding to purchase properties. And I know that's important to many people is getting these vacant properties back on the tax rolls. So I would just, um, maybe Mr. Lockin could take care of reaching out to Mr. Bronk to see um, how things would mesh and what, what actually is available that could possibly be used that will not be having RFPs. For example, I know Pleasant Valley RFP is gonna be coming out very soon. So um, those things need to be taken into consideration as well. Thank you again. Thank you, that's, that's exactly uh, the information. Dr. Zapiri? No, I don't have my hand up. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I, sorry. The, the discussion has been productive. So I think, uh, Frank, if there's nothing else, we just have to, uh, I guess, set the date for the next meeting. And I don't know, um, you know, I don't want to put Chad under too much pressure um, you know, to, to come up with something if it's, you know, We've been meeting every, every two weeks, um, you know, if that's enough time for him or if it's uh, something else is needed. So I think that would be the primary driver for me in terms of setting another meeting date. This is Chad. I'm good for two weeks. We'll make it work. Good way, Chad. So that would be July the 30th. <clears throat> And then our regulars, our, our next regularly, our, uh, so that would be a special meeting on the 30th of July. And our regular scheduled meeting would be the 20th of August. 
So um, is everybody good with meeting on the 30th of July at five o'clock? I guess that sounds like we can do that then. So we'll set a special meeting for the 30th of July at five o'clock. And then our regularly scheduled meeting will be the, the third week, which is, uh, would be the 20th of August. No other discussions on that? I think we're all good. So I guess we uh, just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second, Bordelon. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Chad. We'll see you. Uh, we'll talk in a couple of weeks. Thank you, everyone. Good. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jerry. Sorry I was late. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Appreciate it.